it strikes a chord to a lot of people's hearts that this was and is a fishing village. It's an operational fishing village. And being island people, we have an affinity with the sea. Lee is in the Doomsday Book as Legra. Um, and at that time, there were um, small holders by the water, which would imply that they were fishermen. Um, so the fishing industry goes back over a thousand years. And it must have been hard times because sometimes they used to have to row all the way up to Billingsgate. That's right, yeah. To sell the fish. And the other interesting thing is they used to dig pits mm -hmm. in, in the marshes and store, store the, the, yeah. the actual fish yeah. if, the, if the market wasn't right. or To wait that, until it was better. Better, yeah. 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 Times sometimes are lean and, and sometimes are, are plentiful. And the fishermen themselves have to look to their other skills to be able to do other things to compensate when the fishing um, dries up, as it were. And I think that also, obviously, over the last hundred years or so, the mechanisation of, of what yeah. they do has changed dramatically the, the way that they fish. I mean, you, you touched on the cockle sort of thing, you know, in the days of going out, getting off the boat with a bucket, a, a basket and a rake of, of sort of long gone, and now it's all completely mechanised and, and they're sucked up onto yeah. the boats direct in the 20s and 30s, a massive industry yeah. with, with many, many ships. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, we're, we're a lot less. All of us have grown up here and seen, seen Lee change and evolve and industry change. My main work here for the boat side commercially is the cockle fishing boats. Um, at the moment, last year, they had fewer trips. The cockles were poor. Um, but if they earn less money, they spend less money. You're not going to spend thousands of pounds painting a boat if you haven't earned much money this year. Lee is a very important part of South End. Um, it's not just about cockles and beer, there's a lot, a lot of people employed due to the port of Lee. I deal with 20 or 30 local businesses. I try and, I try and deal with local businesses and everyone down here does as well. We sell our catch direct to the public. We export fish to France. Uh, we sell to Billingsgate. So yeah, we catch and process our own fish. Uh, I've been on and off for 16 years fishing, um, full time for the last 12. Obviously we need nice calm days to go to work, so yeah, when the weather's nice we go to work and we can have a good day in the shop. Our main problem is quotas and uh, choke species, we've got too many skate, not enough soles. Um, but the stuff that's in abundance we're not allowed to catch, and the, and the stuff that's on a the decline they're pushing us to catch. Well our April used to be our season, you go what, you go winter without earning anything and your April you get your money back. Sole fishing, you get 20, 30, anything up to 40 stone every day. You struggle to go and get 10 stone a day now. Um, certain stocks come up and we're not allowed to fish them because there's no quota for them. And certain stocks go down. Well, before, when the stock went down on, on that type of fish, we moved to another type of fish or another type of, of fishing. Uh, we're not allowed to do that anymore. We're just not allowed to do that. And uh, at, like if there's abundance of herrings because the markets haven't been used for many, many years, there's nowhere to sell them. The fishermen were started to be put into a system where you couldn't fish that because you hadn't a track record. But the track records, some years the fish were here to get because you're a, a, an inshore industry, and some years they're not. So some years you couldn't make a track record. When people come down to like, Old Leeds to visit it, like the, the main thing is cockles. That's what everyone comes down here for. This year the cockles have been fantastic though. Like, like nice size, everything's been really good this year. Unfortunately, there's not very many young people sort of coming into the fishing industry. Um, sort of, there's me and there's a few other lads, but there's no really, like when I was younger, there's always younger people trying to get involved in it, but now, now you don't seem to get that anymore. It seems uh, they can go and earn the same money working in a nice warm office, and they don't wanna, I don't blame them in the middle of the winter when it's freezing cold, when they can get going and the same money in an office. And, and I hope, hopefully, well, the cockles will last a long time. It takes quite a lot, quite a lot to get up on 11 o'clock on a Sunday night and go cockle fishing, or get up on a Saturday night and, and go trawling when all your mates are out down the pub. And there's youngsters coming up that want to do this, want to do the trawling. They don't want to go down the pub on a Saturday night, they want to go fishing. They've got an interest in it. And it's, it's, it's although it's 
a reasonably small industry in comparison to, to the booming tourism industry that we have in the town, it's still an industry and it still needs looking after. We have just come out of five or six years of um, very sort of low meat yields and catch rates. We are the, the largest sustainable cockle fishery in Europe, but probably with one of the smallest ports there, there are in the country. Um, so, you know, the, infra the actual infrastructure we've got here is not great. And we sort of, we sort of, sort of get by with it, but um, there's definitely room for, a, you know, a lot of improvements. But most of the boats down here, the cockle boats that are left, their families, you know, they got chased their families back three or 400 years and it's tradition with them and they want to be in league. There wasn't much else in terms of industry and, and, and employment and you follow dad and granddad on onto the boat and yeah, I think that's right. that's prevailed right up until the, the sort of mid to late 20th century and but in later years obviously there are far more opportunities for young people mm, nowadays mm. you know they travel travel obviously um, to go for jobs and we're very close to London so you know that makes it yeah. um, a haven for youngsters who want to go up to the bright lights yeah so it makes it very difficult for the families to keep the children, keep the young men and girls, because there were girl, some girls worked on them, um, within the industry and wanting to be within it, because it's a hard life. There was 14 shrimp boats about when I was shrimping, and um, they were all landing here and um, all had customers and serving local places and around. But we used to do shrimping in the summer and into the autumn, then white weeding in the autumn through into the winter. Um, after 64, the cod came up the river, and so we had a lot of fishing. It was cod, haddock, and all sorts of things suddenly came in the river. But you also see, I mean, when you used to come down and, and see, there was many tourists and visitors that had come to the old town uh, and Lee Port, where they would get their fresh fish, their cockles, mm. their jelly deals, and, and their shrimp, and so on, because then there was a good number of eels that would run, uh, and they were plentiful. As the fishermen retired, nobody was taking their place. The boats were sold on and um, all the shrimp boats have disappeared now. In order for the port to survive, it needs the infrastructure to be upgraded and facilities made available to not just the fishing industry, but the whole of the Old Lee itself. We, we need major power electricity infrastructure we need the creek to be sorted out so as it's viable not just for the fishing fleet but for the leisure fleets and, and all water users for, for the actual port to survive and to become very, very successful. This, this year that the fishery is, has, is on the up. Um, we've had some really good catch rates and we've had a lot better quota this year. Um, and looking at what's actually on, on the beds at the moment, there's a, a lot of small cockles about, which is looking good for the next two or three years. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm pretty confident that, you know, I've, over the next five or six years, we're, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty good. But we do have, a, you do have your down t times, you know, you hit your bad years, which are all sort of, you, you accept. Um, but you, you have to have your good years as well. Old Lee, as we know, is, is very busy tourism-wise um, due to the pubs and restaurants. and. And we're just hiding here behind the wall, just trying to carry on activities and, um, and um, keep the money coming in. The better facilities, the more industry it'll attract. And it's important to have the industry here because otherwise there won't be any commercial industry here. It will move away and we'll be looking at it like other places around the coast where it's just pubs, clubs and travel. Leon C and, and the boats and the, the cockle industry is, is a massive attraction for, for the tourists. Um, you know, you, when the boats come up the creek and we, we swing and they, they watch all the mud being churned up and then the boats being unloaded, it, it really does, you know, you get a lot of people on the wall watching. Um, a, lot of, and so a lot of people come down just, just for that and then they want to obviously taste the local beer and the, and the, the local cockles as well to go with it. Mm -hmm.